Hey guys, what's up? This is part 3 in the multiple series of videos which starts from uh, digital logic and builds up into computer architecture. Today we're going to be looking at Boolean algebra. Okay, so in 1847 there's a guy, George Boole, and he has this book, The Mathematical Analysis of Logic. Okay, so we have some uh, theories and ideas that explain how to use logic gates and convert these into a mathematical way. So we're going to have to introduce some sort of symbolism to represent operations. Okay, so remember we have AND. Okay, and we give AND the symbol, just a dot. Okay, so we can have some variable like x dot uh, c. So this would mean x and c go through the logic gate and you get some sort of output. Let's say the output is y. Okay. Uh, you can also just represent it like this, xc equals y. Same thing in Boolean algebra. Okay, let's just look at the truth table really quickly. Let's do a, b, and we have y. Uh, let's do x, c, and y actually. Okay. Okay, so if you compare this to like regular math that we know, we this kind of looks like multiplication, right? You have xc equals y, this looks like multiplication. And there's a reason for that, because 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, this is pretty cool. Let's go to OR. So we're going to do OR, and in Boolean algebra, we give it the symbol plus. Okay, so you can have x plus c is equal to y. Or some people like to write it like x two lines c equals y. I think you do this when you're doing programming. You use this notation. Okay, and we have x, c, y. And let's, let's do something. What's, uh, hold on, let me finish this. What's 0 plus 0? What's 0 plus 1? What's 1 plus 0? What's 1 plus 1? That's 2. But in binary, we don't have a 2. So, okay. So this is sort of like addition. There's just some sort of a little problem with the last one, right? Okay. But that's okay. I think this is pretty good addition for me. Let's go to the next one. Um, we have... Uh, we have not. Okay? And not, pretend it's just like a dash, like a dash, like underlining, but to like on the top, like top lining. I don't know how you would say it. But we could have x and we put the top line. This just means you have the inverted version. Remember, double inversion law. Remember, if we do this, this is just equal to that. Okay? So that, that's not. And. Yeah, I don't really need to explain the truth table. Like, it's just uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's do XOR. So XOR is given the symbol plus, because it's kind of related to the OR, but we exclusify, like exclusive OR. So we put the circle around it. Okay, and you have X exclusive OR with C equals Y. And there might be other ways, like some weird dash things. But I like to use this, so let's just continue. Because the last things you could get mixed up, so I just use symbols that stand out. Okay, so this is sort of like addition, so let's do addition this time. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. But here we put the 0. Okay, sort of like addition. So. These two guys. I'm telling you right now, when you're making a circuit that adds numbers, you you you're using these guys. You're exploiting you're exploiting their truth tables to give you some to make a true addition, right? So there's some sort of connection here. I'm just gonna point out right now, but we don't need to get into it until later videos. Okay, and then. If we want to, I'll just quickly just write the other ones because there's not any much of a difference. So for NAND, we just do with the same example, we just do X and C and we just put the bar on top. 
Or you could put x dot c and put the bar on top. Okay, and then for nor, we just do uh, x plus c, put the bar on top. Or you could do x dash dash thing c and put the bar on top. And then for x nor, you could guess it. It just follows the same rule. So we have x, and then we put that, and just put the bar on top. Okay, so this is how we could represent all the seven logic gates using some sort of algebraic system with the symbols, the bar thing. And they sort of relate to our regular math, so it should it's not really anything new, right? You know your multiplications of ones and zeros and your additions of ones and zeros, you've made this connection. This you just put the bar on top if it goes through an inverter. So even if, if you take this and you put it through an inverter, this whole thing now gets the bar on top. So this is our convention. Okay. We could go further. And the cool thing is, is that in math, if, you, if your system could add numbers, just add, right? And you could subtract. So you're just adding a negative, like a, a complemented version of the number, right? That's what subtraction is. If you could do that, right? All other mathematical functions are built on addition, right? To get multiplication, right? You're just doing successive additions. To get division, you're just doing subset. So if negative additions, and we're, we're counting how many times the loop reaches until zero. But anyways, the second you could do math, you could do anything. Because once you have division, you have shifting. Right? You could divide using shifting. I mean, you could shift using divides, and you could shift using multiplies. Okay, so you don't have to use special hardware for like shifting. So you could do floating points. So the set and and then you could just use Taylor series. You could use any mathematical function because the second you have some sort of multiply divides, pff, you're done. Like what more is there to algebra other than the fundamental of multiplying and dividing numbers and adding them in between? It's all built on addition. So the adder will help. Okay, so let's say I have a random Boolean circuit. So let's just draw a random Boolean circuit. I label this guy as A. I label this guy as B. I label this guy as C. Okay, let's associate the symbols that we represented before. We have the dot and then we have that bar. Okay, so we know that coming over here we have the A signal and the B signal. They feed into the OR gate, so the output should be A OR with B. Now we have C here. The C is here. Now the rule is that you get C bar on the other side. So now we get C bar. Right? This represents that it went through the inverter. Okay, now we have to add these together. So the output is going to be equal to C bar and I'll put this in parentheses A plus B print. Okay? So we have a way to represent any circuit we could draw, no matter how complicated. Okay? So if we have this and we use the laws that I explained in the previous video about logic laws, we could use things to cancel other things out, like in normal algebra. We could reduce our circuit down into something more efficient. So now I'm going to start explaining the laws that I showed you in the previous video using Boolean algebra. So we know the double inversion law. It says that if we have A here, we could represent it with A bar. Okay? So if we have A coming in originally, we'll have A here a bar and then we get a again and this is equal to a bar bar right if you double invert it it comes back to its original state okay this is cool what about de morgan's theorem okay let's let's say de morgan's theorem so we have the and gate is 
we have a, b, and we have x here. So x is just equal to a and b bar. Okay, but De Morgan's theorem says that this is equivalent to an OR gate with inverted inputs. So it's an OR gate that treats zeros as ones and ones as zeros. That's what this is, an OR gate that treats zeros as ones and ones as zeros. Okay, we have A, B, and we have X here. Okay, but what's coming in is A bar. What's actually going into the OR gate is A bar. What's going into the OR gate is B bar. So X is equal to A bar plus B bar. Okay, so De Morgan's theorem says that this is true. Okay. What about for the NOR gate? So let's just draw the NOR gate. De Morgan's theorem also says that the NOR gate is equal to an AND gate with inverted inputs. Right, a, B, we have A and we have B. Okay, so let's write this in Boolean algebra. So we have X is equal to A plus B all bar. Okay, and this says that x is equal to, remember, truly coming into here is a bar, and truly coming into here is b bar. So it says that a bar and b bar all barred, these guys are the exact same. So this is De Morgan's theorem represented using Boolean algebra. Okay, so let's go for forward. Let's check out the distributive law. So let me just get my paper. Okay, so let's go over the di distributive law. So the distributive law shows that if we have A, B, and C, and from these inputs we have coming in to uh, AND gate, and then they're going through the OR gate. We're going to have, uh, wait, I, let me label these this way. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay, so we could represent this in Boolean algebra, right? So coming out of here, we have C and B, and coming into here, we have A. And the output we have as A or with C and B. We're just going to write it like A or with CB, okay? This, I think, is a better way to label. Okay, that's cool. The, so the distributive law says that this is equivalent to this, this circuit, where I have two OR gates. And we could try to put the reason why. It's called the distributive law. And I'll show you what I mean once you see the Boolean version of it, and you compare it to this Boolean. So we have... Yeah, we have this circuit right here, and I'm going to label this guy as uh, C, A, and this guy as B. Okay, so this says that this circuit and this circuit are the same. Okay, so the input that has full power over this uh, OR gate, so this wire right here, that is translated right into here. It gets distributed, translated to distribute over two OR gates now. Okay, so let's draw the Boolean expression. So we have A here and B here, so we're going to get A or B. And we have C coming in here, and but we have A coming in here. Now we have A or C, and we add it together. And our answer, we're going to get A plus B added with A or C. Okay, that's pretty cool. And could you see that, right? Let's 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 uh, make this very clear, okay? We are saying that A or C B is equal to 
A plus B and A plus C. Okay, let's see how this really works out. Okay, look, 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 look. Since this is A or, right, we have the A or there. So each of them are going to get distributed. The or, so this thing is what is going to be in between the distributions, okay? So these are the, the ors, right? All the red is related, okay? Now I'm going to bring out purple to relate the and. And since the and is between the CB that we're choosing to distribute the CBs, right? Between the A's, right? So these are the difference between what, what's truly coming to the A. So this is these parts, and this is where the and ends up at the end of the distribution. So I'm trying to put this as easy and logically as possible of how and why this is true. Okay? So this is the first distributable. Now there's a second distributable. the second distributive law, we have uh, an OR gate, we have an AND gate, this is C, this is B, and then we have this. So at this point we have A, this point we have B or C, and then the output we're going to have A and B or C. Okay. So, I'm, I'm just going to use the logic I was just explaining. So, remember, I'm going to break into th this part, right? So, I know that inside of the parentheses of the two terms, I'm going to have two terms because I'm distributing, okay? So, I know inside of these parentheses, I'm going to have an A, okay? Now, I have the plus here. So I know that there's going to be, I should squish in a plus. So this is going to be a distribution of some sort of and with another and. And they're going to be separated with the plus. Okay, so now I distribute the B in this one and the C in that one. And so I'm speculating that the circuit that I showed in the previous video, it's going to be this one. So from here, I'm going to go into a circuit. Okay, I'm going to build a circuit from here and get the circuit back from the boolean. So I know we have three inputs A, B, and C. Okay. I know that A and B are added together. So let's just draw AND gate. So A goes into this AND gate. B goes into this AND gate. Okay. Then I'm going to have A and C. So I know I have a AND gate here. And A comes in. And C comes in. Okay. And then the product of those is going to be an OR. So it's like a sum. You're summing these. We get our output. Now, if you don't believe me, you will go back in the other video, the, my previous second video, and you will see this is the circuit I was explaining about the distributive law. So I went from the Boolean to the circuit. And I showed you how to go from the circuit to the Boolean. Okay. And you can see the distribution, right? Uh, let me just color this so it stands out. So this OR is this guy right here. Okay, then this guy is this guy. And this guy is this guy. Okay, so we're distributing this guy, this AND over 2 because A has the big priority. So A gets control over both of the distributions. And then B and C are the de dependency. Okay, so that's why they go into their separated and different ends. And we can see that right here. Okay, that's cool. So now let's go into the absorption laws. So the absorption law shows that we have an OR gate here, an AND gate there. And we have this. This guy's coming in from there. So this is A, okay, this is B, and let's find our output. So we have A plus B coming out of here, and we have A coming into there. So what this is showing is that A, and this is an AND, 
and a plus b. Now we said this is equal to a. Okay. But let's do some Boolean algebra on this thing. Okay, so we see that we have this guy. Let's do a distributive law. Okay, so we have some sort of distribution. And it's going to be separated with this guy. And now we're going to distribute like this. So we put the A into this guy. Put the B into this guy. Okay, but what is this? We know, we know this. This is one of the AND identities. So we're taking this and just feeding it straight into both inputs. This is just equal to itself. So we could conclude that this whole thing is equal to this A word with A and B. Okay, so what are we saying? We have this guy. Okay, we have that. It's, it has the AND and it has the OR. And we did some Boolean algebra through some steps and we got this guy. But look, this one has an OR here, this one has an AND here. And what is the second distributive law that I showed you in the other video? Let's let's draw out let's draw it out. I have an AND gate there, an OR gate there. And this is like that. Uh, wait, I'm doing this wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I drew this one wrong. So B is coming in there. This is coming from A. Output of that feeds into there. This guy's coming into there. And what is our output? Well, okay, let's do this. We have A and B coming in out of here. This is and, we have or, and we have a here, and then these two expressions get or together, so we have a or with b and a. Now, this is the exact same thing as this. So these are equivalent, and this whole thing is just equal to a. Okay, this is the absorption law. So you could represent the XOR gate in a different way using Boolean algebra, you could have the XOR gate uh, is like A XOR with B. This is equal to A bar B, right? Or that with A B bar. Okay, why is this true? The XOR gate, let's just draw the truth table for the XOR gate quickly. And it'll make sense really, really soon. Okay, now the XOR gate is only checking if they're opposite of each other, right? If they're, if two, both the inputs are opposite of each other, right? If any of them are opposite of each other, then this is true, right? So we have some sort of OR logic. If this one, if the second row or column, or the third row or, or column, I don't know. I get mixed up between rows and columns. I think these are columns. Okay, the second row or the third row, right? That's the OR. This is checking for the second row. This is checking for the third row. And they're distributed with the OR. Now this condition also needs to be true. Are they opposite of each other? Is A bar and B. Or you get A and B bar. Are they opposite of each other? And then it lets a 1 go through. So this is a cool way to think about it. You could also say that A X or B is equal to a bar or B and that's anded right if I don't put any dot and it's just it's like multiplication but that represents and B bar this is also equivalent to the XOR and you could go through the logic and think about it in a logical way but just take these for facts when we're solving Boolean, more complicated Boolean circuits, you could use these facts to, con you always want to convert, you always want to get rid of the XOR when you're doing Boolean algebra. Second you get the XOR, you just want to convert it into what I just showed you, right? Then you could start doing some distribution and absorptions and identities or identities and that type of stuff when you're solving 
the boolean stuff. Okay, so let's draw a circuit. Random circuit, we're gonna reduce it. Okay, so we, let's put an XOR. We have an AND E here. Okay, we want to get a reduced version. So first we get C bar. We get A XOR with B. And then we're going to C bar have an AND it with a x or b okay so let's do this let's first read right over here let's convert this into or's or logic so we have c bar n and i'm just gonna go with uh i don't know i'm gonna go with who knows let's just see what happens Okay. Now I want to do a distributive law on this guy. Okay, so I see that there's this. So there's going to be C bar with something. And it's going to be distributed with the plus. And I have a C bar. Now I just distribute. So I, I just chuck in. And they're going to be anded together. Right? So I'm just going to delete the end. I don't really need it. So I'm just going to put A bar B there and and then I get A B bar there. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I have this circuit. Okay, so here are some other laws that we should know. We should know that A B and we or that with A and B bar this is just equal to A. Okay, we should also know that if we have A or B, and we end that with A or B bar, this is also equal to A. Okay, and we should also know that if we have A, and we or that with A bar B, we should get A or B. And we should also know that if you have A, and we end that with A bar B, and we or these actually, we should also get A and B. Okay, so these are four other laws that we should know. And we could do lots of simplifications with this. Uh, I think there's also one more that I should mention. I should mention that, I'll write this in a different color mention that A and B or with A bar and C this is equal to A B or with A bar C and that's ordered with B and C okay so what we did was that we so we have uh, let me color put this so we have the or here so they're all separated with the or Okay, and we have A, B, and we have A bar C. Okay, so we keep the A bar C, we keep the A, B, but we add this term that has the B and the C that are different from the A and the A bar. Okay, that's all we do. We keep the A, B, and we keep the A, C, we kept them, and we just keep the two extra that are not inverted at all. So the two different B and the C come together. Okay, so these are all the laws that we need.